For the past few weeks, me and my friend have been using the app Randonautica. One night recently, me and Daniel went to the movies. When the movie ended, it wasn't that late, so we came up with the idea to grab some food and use the app. We searched for creepy locations, and the app gave us a destination to drive to. The app was taking us to a quiet part of the highway. We had to pull over by an abandoned rest stop and walk the rest of the way because there were no roads heading into where the app was telling us to go. Me and Daniel walked towards the woods and climbed over an old rusty fence. We carried on walking into the woods with about five minutes left until we reached our destination. We came prepared and brought with us flashlights as we've been doing this often. We finally arrived to the location where the app was leading us to and it led us to a cabin. It was hard to tell if someone was using this or it was left abandoned. Daniel asked if we should go inside and look around. I said, I don't know. It could be someone's property. Daniel eventually convinced me to check it out. There weren't any cars around or lights in the cabin and we were kind of in the middle of nowhere, so I agreed. We entered the cabin by going through the front door as it was unlocked. Just like the outside, the cabin looked abandoned, but also like someone had been living there. The downstairs was relatively normal. We went upstairs and there was only one room. We assumed it to be a bedroom, and after opening the door, we were right. The room was not normal, however. Someone had nailed pages from what I assumed was a Bible all over the walls and ceiling. Scattered on the floor were more Bibles and Bible pages that had been ripped out. If this wasn't creepy enough, there was a bag sitting on the bed. I looked inside and there was a small Bible, a box of matches, a large rusty pair of scissors and a hammer that had blood on it. I showed Daniel what was in the bag and he said we should probably leave. As we went downstairs, Daniel stopped me and told me to be quiet. After listening out carefully, we heard men talking in the near distance. Then I noticed through the window about six or seven flashlights in the woods approaching the cabin. We quietly left through the front door again and started jogging back to where the car was. We hopped the fence and drove back home. That night, Daniel texted me with a picture of a news article that he had read that was posted two days ago. A man brutally murdered in his home. He was found with Bible pages stuffed in his hand. I keep thinking that those men by the cabin we found were responsible for that man's murder. And if we had been caught in their cabin, me and Daniel might have suffered the same similar fate.